Okay, cottage owners, uh, listen up. We're gonna talk about the tax problems created by cottages and what you can do about them uh, before you pass away or in your estate planning to help minimize the tax bill, uh, either by selling the cottage or by transitioning it to family members uh, at some point. My name is Dave Harris. I'm a certified financial planner and I'm looking forward to talking to you about how to deal with the cottage in your family and how to how to deal with some of the pitfalls and some of the things we've seen in the, in our experience and help protect you from making those mistakes. So let's talk about number one, about skyrocketing real estate prices. I think it's no secret that, that cottage properties along with every other property in this in this province have gone up, but, but more so cottage properties since the pandemic in, in 2020. Uh, we wanna talk about some key mistakes that we've seen cottage owners make. Let's talk about the tax on those properties and we'll identify some top strategies to reduce or eliminate the tax bill on your cottage. So just briefly, uh, a report from Remax came out in 2021, and I think they do one of these each year, but I, I look particularly at the 2020, 2021 property uh, report, and they highlighted that in the Muskoka area, the average uh, price for a waterfront cottage was expected to reach about $1.7 million which is 66% higher than their prices were in 2019. So that's a massive increase. Even more so on a percentage basis, cottages up in the Gray and Bruce uh, counties up on the Bruce Peninsula have gone uh, on the waterfront or around a million dollars, but that is double their 2019 prices. And so with these kind of price increases, uh, even though we've seen prices maybe come back in certain sectors and certain values in the last year with high interest rates, the values are still significantly higher than 2019. And I think once we start to see rates drop, those values are gonna to continue to climb. So it's important to understand how CRA taxes uh, this capital, what's called the capital gain or this increase in value and, and how to minimize that and potentially deal with it with some planning strategies. So just to give an example here, let's say we've got a cottage that was purchased in Muskoka for half a million dollars in 2010, let's say, okay? And the, the family's put maybe $100,000 of capital improvements into the cottage. So they've got a $600,000 cost based on a cottage. But today, that cottage is worth $1.7 million. So now they've had a capital gain, the difference between the adjusted cost base, which is what they paid for it, plus the improvements, and what it can sell for today of $1.1 million. In the year they sell that cottage, they're gonna to have to include half of that capital gain in their taxable income. And so depending on what marginal, what tax rate they're in, and we're assuming the highest marginal tax rate here, they could pay up to $300,000, $294,000 in tax on that cottage sale. If we fast forward 20 years from today and assume a 5% growth rate, that tax bill rises to almost a million dollars. So these are significant dollars that, that you need to be aware of as a cottage owner and, and look at some ways to deal with either minimizing it or at least preparing to have that tax paid. So five key mistakes that we see cottage owners make that can impact the potential cost to their family is number one is just forgetting to keep track of those capital improvements. Make sure you set up a binder or a file and keep track of those improvements you make to the cottage. And I'm not talking about things like roof repairs or new covering on your deck or something like that. These are capital improvements need to be, you know, additions to the cottage, a bunkie on the property, uh, a new bathroom that's been added or a dock that's been put on the waterfront. These big improvements increase your cost base, okay? Uh, another mistake we see happening is parents trying to put their cottage in the name of their children uh, too early. Um, and because once you do that, you then bring into the a cottage relationship, a, a trust. You've created a, what's called a bear trust. And this year, starting in 2023, a bear trust is reportable and there are significant penalties if you do not report uh, this bear trust on a T3 trust return. Uh, so that's really important. Uh, in addition, when you bring in children and, and, and their spouses, you bring their uh, potential financial challenges, whether that comes in the form of a, 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 you know, a divorce or potential bankruptcy, there's a potential for the cottage to be drawn into those financial uh, challenges of your children. So just be aware of that. Uh, another thing we see is selling the cottage to their children at less than fair market value and creating a potential for, for double taxation. Uh, lastly, failing to consider the cost of maintenance and upkeep 
uh, when you pass this this cottage along to your kids? You know, has that been considered? And is the, is the are the kids financially able to cover the cost of maintaining this cottage and paying the insurance and, and taking care of all the upkeep? You know, what provisions have been put in place to make sure that can happen? And maybe one of the biggest things you need to do is to talk to your kids, talk to your family, see what they want. You know, it's quite it's not unusual to find that in a, in a situation where you have a cottage and a number of kids involved that not all of them use the cottage equally. Some may not even live in, may not even live in the area and have the opportunity to to use the cottage. So, you know, really have an open discussion with your kids about what they want before we start making too many plans. So let's let's touch on uh, this idea of gifting to the cottage and how to transfer the cottage to your kids. So one way to do this is to transfer the cottage, you know, to your kids at less than fair market value. You know, you realize the kids aren't in a position to pay full value for the cottage. You may have enough financial resources otherwise to pay for your lifestyle expenses, but you want to give the cottage to them, make sure they have that to carry on the traditions that you've started with your family. So as in our previous discussion, the cottage might be worth $1.7 million, and there could be a $1.1 million capital gain on a cottage, then you're still gonna pay the tax on that capital gain, on that taxable capital gain. So your tax bill isn't diminished. The problem is your child now just bought a cottage for $1,000. So they've got a cottage that's worth 1.7 million that, it, that has a cost base for them of, of $1,000. And so they've already got a, a taxable problem on their hands and they've just taken ownership of the cottage. And so this can result in double taxation. So definitely something you want to avoid. And so a better way to do this is to actually uh, gift the cottage to your kids at no cost. Okay. And then when you gift the cottage to the kids, what happens is your tax bill stays the same, but the kids cost base is exactly what the fair market value is. So they don't inherit a tax bill and there's no duplicate tax. Okay. We can take this one step further and use something called the capital gains reserve. And so when you gift, if you sell the cottage to your kids, instead of gifting it to them, you sell them to it, sell it to them and you use a promissory note. So the kids give you back a note that says, listen, I'm going to buy this cottage off you and we're going to spread the payments over five years. That allows you to spread your capital gains uh, inclusion over five years as well. So instead of, you know, having a, you know, $550,000 or $500,000 capital gain in year one that you've got to pay tax on, you get to take that capital gain and spread it over five years. Uh, and so this has the advantage of potentially, well, number one, it'll defer tax. You don't have to pay all the tax up front, so you get to spread it over five years. And number two, potentially lowering your tax bracket. And so instead of having, you know, 100,000 or 50, you know, instead of having a $500,000 income inclusion in year one, you get to have $100,000 income inclusion in over five years. And so the tax rate, the average tax rate you have will be lower. So you can reduce tax and defer it using the gifting strategy. Another solution uh, we won't get into too much detail on today would be to use life insurance, okay? And this allows you to retain the ownership and control your property while you're alive and set aside some of your money or even some of the money from the kids. The kids can help fund a policy, but buy a life insurance policy Typically, we like to use a joint last to die policy that will pay out tax-free dollars exactly when they're needed to help cover the capital gains tax on the, on the transition of that property from you or your estate to your kids when you pass away. And you can buy enough life insurance to cover that capital gains tax and maybe some extra money to build a pool of funds so the kids have money to help uh, pay for the maintenance and upkeep of the cottage for many years to come. And quite often, if it's done correctly, life insurance is one of the most effective ways to do this because you're getting tax-free money, usually for pennies on the dollar, and it's paid exactly when it's needed when the tax bill is due. And we just, we don't know when that will be because we don't know when we're gonna die. So regardless of when you pass away, that money will be available. Uh, and so that's another solution to consider. Um, and then ultimately, if the plan is to uh, not keep the cottage past your life, life uh, the kids don't want to use the cottage, there's no plans for them to inherit it, maybe sell the cottage, uh, you know, in the late stages of your life before you pass away so that you can distribute the cash to the kids directly rather than have that money end up in the estate and be part of the probate uh, process and, and attract probate tax. So that's another, another thing to consider. So... Just wanted to cover off a few things with you today regarding cottage tax and estate planning. Number one, I wanted to realize that there's a significant tax bill coming with that cottage property. Number two, uh, that there are strategies you can do to help pass that cottage to your kids and reduce the tax bill to yourself. 
And number three, there are some pitfalls that can happen if you don't uh, pay attention and don't get proper advice. So please reach out with any questions. Uh, you can make comments below and I wanna thank you for your time. Thank you.